Good try. Okay. So, okay, number six. Uh, number six. Uh, we have to find the zeros for this polynomial, get the multiplicity of each. So that means, is it going to bounce off of it? Is it going to pass through it? And then figure out, does it, if it actually does cross the, uh, the x-axis or, uh, or turns around there, you have to state that for each of those. So you can't just know it by the multiplicity. You have to tell me, you have to actually write that down. So this problem will require that you need to factor it. You have to factor this problem. So when you first look at it, what's the first thing you should do? Yeah, take out an X. So we're going to take out the common factor, right? So we take out an X of each of the items, and here you go. Okay. So there's that. So far, so good. Now, the parentheses, this tr uh, trinomial, can go further. So one more step. Uh, I believe it's a, what, difference of, it's, it's two parentheses, and I believe they're the same, right? It's X and X plus 2, X plus 2, and X. So that means that when we write that down, that is X and X plus 2 squared. There's actually two of those parentheses. All right, so this is my function. Right, that's the, that's the <coughs> function that we've, we've actually factored it completely. Now, the reason why we do that is so that you can read off what the zeros are, the roots of the problem. Hey, Tink. Perfect time. All right. Okay, we just started with number six. Okay, so on this particular problem, now we have to read off what the roots are. So what would make each of these parentheses equal zero? Zero. Okay, good. Those are the zeros. So that's what we have here. We just found that part. Okay, we found the zeros, the roots. That's what they call the x-intercepts, whatever you want to call them. So zero and negative two. Now, what we have to discuss now is the multiplicity of them. So that means, so zero and two. Watch this. Zero and what, negative two? So negative two are my roots. I'm just writing these down so you don't mess those up. So those are my two roots. Now. Random bits, you can see it now. What is the multiplicity of the zero root? What's the power? Zero. Or one. one. Okay, that's the, that's the power, right? It has a power of one. So that means that it's either going to bounce off of it or it's going to pass through it. So now, what is the odd power mean? Pass through. Passes through. So the zero, it will pass through the x axis right there. Now, the reason why is because the power on that particular, or the multiplicity of that particular root was the power of one. And the reason why it's an odd power. Odd powers will pass through that. Now, what I want to see is that you've done this, and that you're actually like writing pass through, like below it. Does that make sense? Like this is what I want to see like on your test. Like that, not that, I'm just writing that big so you can see it. I'm going to write that. Okay, we good? Okay, now, what about the negative 2? Two? Okay, yeah, it's got a degree of 2, right? So it's got a degree of 2. So what does degree 2 mean? Bounce. It'll bounce. So we are going to bounce off of this particular x-intercept. So like if you're graphing it, it would actually hit negative 2 and then turn around. It wouldn't actually pass through all the way. But it is still an x-intercept. Uh, and the reason why that it's going to bounce is because of the power of 2 or a square, but it's an even power. That's why it's bouncing. That's the idea. So if that was a four, again, it would bounce. Now, the higher the power, the more flat it gets at that particular root. So this is a two, so it just kind of turns around right away. If it was a three, it kind of flattened out a little more. Okay. okay, questions with the idea of what multiplicity is? I'm trying to explain it kind of in words and everything. Good? Okay, perfect. Let's move on. So that was number six. It's kind of how easy it is. It shouldn't take you very long. It should be factorable. I'm trying to give you a problem that is factorable. It shouldn't take you very long. Okay, are we good? Can I erase it? Okay, let's move on. Let's go to number seven. Okay, number seven. You have to long divide. So, on number seven, yes, you have to show me you can long divide this problem. You have to be able to long divide it. Okay? Um, so, on this particular case, when you long divide, there's a certain part that goes in the house, a certain part that doesn't. I believe we did one of these problems in class one day, so this is kind of a nice review of it. So, what part is going in the house? The second part. Which part? The middle part. Which part? 
The three x squared plus one. Outside. That's outside. outside. I thought we were talking about the outside. No, he said which part goes in the house. Oh, the house has Thanks for paying attention to me. I thought you said outside. Now, all right, outside is the three x uh, squared plus zero x plus one. Notice, I put the zero. I have, to, I have to make sure I put in all the ghost terms, that's what I call them, the missing terms. Uh, so I plug in the zero. Now, on the rest of it, this is the dividend, right? The dividend, uh, again, that's kind of keywords there. That's the dividend, this is the divisor. The dividend goes in the house. So this part goes in the house, but the problem is I have to make sure I have all the terms, the missing terms as well. So it's gonna be 18x to the fourth. Good question. Well, I could. All right. Okay. Yeah. No. All right. Hey. Okay. Real quick. Let's keep going. All right. So next. So the next part. We have synthetic division, right? So synthetic. Um, so this is problem number eight. The big problem with number eight that most people mess up, and I've warned you on test, or on when we were doing this in the sections, when, uh, when we're actually in that section for synthetic division, if you forget your zeros, your answer will be way off. You have to have the zeros. Okay, now I will set this problem up and I'll do a few lines, uh, but I won't finish it, okay? So, when you do synthetic, this is what it looks like. 96. Hey, okay, so what number goes in the box? Two. two. Positive two. It's a plus two, the reason why? Because of this. I will not give you a complicated one, you just have to know that the, the actual divisor number, the root of that, actually goes in the house. Now, going across the top, what are the numbers across the top? Two, six, zero. Zero, oh, negative two, four, negative three, three, one. This part is the part I'm gonna catch people. Test day, it has to be in the right order. Descending order with all zeros plugged in. So if this is in weird scrambled order, you have to rearrange it and fill the zeros. In weird scrambled order. <coughs> Take care of that. All right. <laughs> Mr. War. All right, now to let's, let's go through a couple steps here. Drop down the first number. That's a six. Multiply by the number in the box, add straight down, multiply by the number in the box, and I'm going to stop there. You guys know the idea. Now, whatever this turns out to be, let's say that this, let's say this, let's say this, let's say it's not, let's say it is. Let's say it's 187. Let's say it is. Let's say it's 187. Let's say it's 187. Now, if it's 187, you have to make sure it's over the x minus 2 like I heard. And whatever comes in front of that, so this is the 187 in the back, whatever things come up here, you're going to build up. This might be a constant. I don't know what this number might be. 93. 93. Okay, let's just say it's that, and you're going to build up an X until you get up to X to the fourth. Let's say it's something like that. Okay. I'm not sure. I'm not sure, but let's say that's where we're at. All right. Get the idea? Yo. <laughs> no, I don't get it. Can you do the whole problem? No. <laughs> That's right. No. All right. Here we go. Let's move on. I think you guys get the idea of the mouse. It makes you feel like the whole test is on top. No. You guys already know. I shouldn't even put it on. That and long division. No. All right. Nine. This is the tough one. Like we could just skip this. No. <laughs> this is the one that I believe will take you the longest on your test. Um, what I mean by this, you have to figure out all the possible roots, all of them, um, that, that will possibly work, the rational roots, and you have to find which ones work. So this is the part where you will need a calculator for the test. So you will need a scientific calculator at some point. I will show you kind of what I would do if I was doing this type of problem. So um, the first thing, we have to list off the roots. So this is where you have to use the back number and the front number, the leading coefficient, the one. So you take the constant, you put that on the top, you put the leading coefficient on the bottom, and then you break these up into all the numbers that multiply to give you those, all the roots, or all the factors of those. So all the factors of four are one, twos, and fours. Those are all the numbers that multiply to give you four. What? Um, we'll consider that later, because it'll be plus or minus for all of these. Um, and then the bottom number, for the one, it's just one or one. 
right? Now, like Macy was saying, like why not positive and negative? Well, we're going to have that because we have to set up every possible combination, putting the constant on the top and the, the leading coefficient on the bottom when you have all those factors. So really, on this particular problem, it's going to be 1 over 1, 2 over 1, and 4 over 1. So these are my possible roots. These are the possibilities. These are the possible roots for this problem. Now we have to check which ones work. So you have to find that that possible um, checklist. Okay. So how I how I would do this? I would start with the smaller numbers first because I think they're easiest. And once you find them, you have to find the remaining roots. So you're going to reduce this thing down. So I'm going to start with like the number one or negative one. It really doesn't matter. Uh, I'm going to start with that one first, and here's how I do it. It's called synthetic, di uh, synthetic division or synthetic substitution. I'm going to take my problem, and I'm going to start with the positive one first and plug it in. Because why I'm doing this? If I plug in a one, it actually gives me zero. That's what we're doing. So, one third, one squared, one Okay. Okay, so I plugged in the 1, you get 1 minus 2 minus 7 minus 4, definitely not, not going to give you 0, so definitely not a root, so 1 is thrown out. And then you try negative 1, and you keep going. Now, what was 1 that worked? 4. 4, okay, so we tried 4. So you went through all the lists, we tried positive 4. Okay, positive 4 is 4 to the third power, minus 2 times 4 squared, uh, minus 7 times 4, Minus 4. So this turns out to be negative 28. Uh, minus 4. This is 16 times 2, which is negative 32. And then this number is 4 times 4 times 4, which is 64. And yes, it gives you 0. Okay. So that is a root. So boom, we found 1. Once you find one root that works, so let's say we found 4, you could take what the reduced form is. So what I mean by that is if you long divide or synthetic divide 4 out of this thing. Zero. 1, negative 2, negative 7, negative 4, right, in descending order, so I synthetic divide it out. Now, some people might just choose to do synthetic instead of doing that, um, but I drop this down, multiply by the box, drop it straight down, multiply by the box, drop it straight down, multiply by the box, um, add straight down. This part right here, the 1x squared plus 2x plus 1, you can possibly factor this thing apart. Or, instead of factoring, you could um, do the quadratic formula, which will be on the board, so we did that earlier on the, the first part, the first half of the test, and that will give me the rest of the roots. Well, this thing is actually factorable. X plus one, X plus one. Yeah, X plus one, X plus one, it actually factors, which is? Negative one. one. So negative one is your other root. So, but, here's what I want. I actually want you to tell me what the roots are, right? So, like, off to the side, you have all your possibilities. Maybe instead of you know circle them, actually tell me the roots are positive four and negative one. And negative one is actually a double root. It actually repeated twice. How I know that? There's actually two parentheses that have it. Okay, but this is what I'm looking for. Maybe you need to circle it. Put a box around it. Okay, double root. Yeah, as long as you have them listed, that's all I care about. If you want to put double root, find it. Okay, if, it, if it happened three times, it's called a triple root. Double root. Double root. Double root. Double root. Double root. No, it's a two X plus one. As long as you list off the numbers, that's all I can do. Now, again, how I knew to, how to find those. If you actually long divide or synthetic divide one of the roots that works out, this is called a reduced polynomial, and the reduced polynomial is the rest of the roots. So you could just quadratic formula, you could factor it apart like what we did, and it will give you the rest of the roots. Well, these just turn out to be negative one the whole time. Uh, quadratic formula, this is your A, that's B, that's C. And you can just plug that into your quadratic, and it'll give you all the rest of the other roots. Now, on this problem, what was your biggest power? Three, there's three potential roots. And it did have three, it actually had four and negative one twice. And the reason why is that when you actually look at a picture of this thing, it passes through the number positive four, but it bounced off a negative one. So it was a, it was a multiplicity problem. Okay, question. Okay, last round. 10. 10 is I think our last round. 
Now, hey, here's something I didn't require it on the test or on, on this thing. Um, what would make this problem easier for you if you do the Descartes rule of sign first? Um, the reason why is that can tell you if like you even need to waste time doing negatives or positives. You do not. I'm not requiring it, but it will make it easier if you have a ton of roots to check. Because I, this will take you the longest. I know it will, because there's going to be a ton of roots and you have to check them. So maybe How about you, wanna, you give us a problem that only has wanna, like three or four? I love the way. Has three or four? Yeah. He's going to do that anyway. You're right. He's smiling right now. He's going to give us some of the top right there. I bet he'll have like six. I bet I'll see you right in. All right, moving on. All right, here we go. Ten. I'm just going to try it all. I'm not looking at the top right. Okay, here we go. You have to graph this thing. This is your seven-step method of graphing. What I mean by that? You have to figure out where the tails go, figure out x-intercepts, y-intercepts, figure out if it has horizontal, vertical asymptotes, if it has a slant, um, and then try to approximate where that thing's going without a graphing calculator or you know a Chromebook. So you have to use your other calculator, and you have to kind of guesstimate where this thing's going. No, you're not allowed to. Yes. All right. Now, so let's talk about this. So on this particular problem, the first thing I would actually do is the vertical asymptote. I would do the vertical asymptote first. Um, the reason why that I would do this first is it's kind of easy. Um, the check itself is, and it, it, it's very um, straightforward that once you have that done, and you know kind of where it's rigid, you know how many pictures to draw, um, then I would go into like x intercepts and y intercepts because then it naturally kind of tells me where the picture of the like the graph is going um, And then after that I'll, I'll figure out if it has a horizontal or if it has you know that But just remember the horizontal asymptotes and the slant. They're kind of more of a guideline it, They're not as rigid as vertical like these are this thing does have verticals um, So on this particular problem, let's factor the bottom part. What do you have? Yeah, x plus one, x minus one. So what are my actual, what are my actual um, verticals? Negative one. And positive. Yeah, negative one and positive one. So at negative one, there is a root or a vertical asymptote, I should say, and at positive one. So this thing has three pictures. There's a picture on the left side over here. There's a picture squeezed in the middle somehow, and there's a picture on the right. Now looking at this thing right now, there is potential. This thing is perfectly symmetrical. Um, just because of how everything is perfectly balanced over the origin. Why don't we just do the thing? Yeah, we could, we could test that, but I'm not going to worry about that until we see the numbers now. Um, so the vertical asymptotes, again, how we figure that out, it was whatever makes the bottom zero, so it was negative one or positive one. And they didn't even cancel out. So they are definitely verticals. Uh, now, what are my x-intercepts? What makes the top zero? Zero. Zero. So you have an x-intercept right at zero. So it is crossing right over the zero. I'm betting on the middle is doing something like this, where it's doing this really long like S shape, kind of right through the middle. Going right now. Uh, but we'll figure it out here in a minute. Y intercept. You already know it. Zero. Zero. Now, how I know that? If you plug in zeros to everything, to like this original problem, you'll figure out what the y intercept is. It's not just what makes the top zero. No, it's not just what makes the top zero. It's actually plugging zero into this problem like this. That's how I get the y-intercept of being zero. Okay? Now, horizontal. Is the top power smaller than the bottom? Yeah, the top power is a one, right? The top degree is a one. The bottom degree is two. So it does have a horizontal kind of a guideline. Um, it does have a horizontal asymptote at zero. Now you're thinking, Ward, you just only went through zero. Yeah, because horizontal is a guideline. It's not as rigid as a vertical. That means that um, what I'm betting on is that the tails on the outside of this picture plug against that. So like the tails, like if I'm over here, the tail will probably come down and hug up against it, or it'll come up this direction. So this thing might actually look symmetrical. Okay. Now, to, to figure out the rest of this part, Okay, because we've basically done everything up until this point. We've figured out horizontals. It doesn't have slant, by the way, because it has a horizontal. Um, but on this particular case, um, what I'm going to need to do now is plug in a couple numbers. Plug a couple numbers over here. Pick just a few. Um, pick a number on either side of zero 
and then pick a couple numbers over here and type them in your calculator. So that's why you need a scientific calculator. So maybe I'll pick like negative 9, uh, negative 5, negative 3, pick like negative half. And let's pick those same numbers on the other side and get kind of a viewing of where this thing's going. Well, I'm just going to save, I'm going to save your time because I'm going to type it mine just so we can get, we can cut to it. Okay, what do we got? What? No. All right. Because again, you're going to have to type this in. Wait, we're going to have yeah. x squared <laughs> minus 1. All right. <laughs> okay, so if we're, if we're going up to uh, if we're going to negative 6, negative 6, when I type it in, when I type negative 6 and I plug it into all the x's here, and then I actually simplified this fraction down, here's what my calculator told me. Again, when I plugged in negative 6, it told me, um, I don't know why I just wrote it like that. Alright, so I plugged in negative 6 into the x. The y number that was spit out was negative 0.683. Actually, it's 685. 685. So Alright, now, uh, negative, what are we plugging in? Negative 5. Um, uh, so I plugged in negative 5, what is that? Point Negative point eight three three. So it looks like it's it's getting like it's going down a little bit. Um, skip negative three. Uh, negative three. Negative nine, not negative six. Uh, plug negative six. We'll say negative six. Okay. I'm a dork. Just go with it. Um, negative three. Negative one point five. Um, what do we? What was the next number we plugged in? Uh, negative half. Seven. Negative half. Negative point five was two point six. Um, positive half. Negative two point six. Um, plugging in. Let's plug in like positive three now. If I plug in positive three, it gives me one point five. And I'm betting on five probably gives me the opposite. Yeah, five gives me the point eight three three. So it's just going to do the exact opposite of the other. So it looks like. The farther out I'm going, it's get, it's hugging closer and closer to zero, but on the negative side. So it's probably doing something like this. And then it's going to go down further and further and further. Now, how I know that is because as I went closer to that vertical asymptote, like negative three, the number's getting lower and lower. It's actually going lower. So that's probably what my graph looks like on that side. In the middle, it was doing this. Like I said, it was going to make this weird S shape going through the middle. The other side of negative half and positive half are going to be different numbers. And then on the other side, it's doing this. There you go, there's your graph. That's, how, that's exactly what I expect. And that's the type of stuff I want to see off to the side. Even this little table helps me out. Do you want us to hit actual points or do you just want us to sketch the graph? Sketch a rough, rough draw. How do you know what the middle is going to do? The middle? That's just to get a um, because when I plug in a couple numbers here in the middle, it, one was positive, one was negative, so it was going the opposite. So yeah, if you don't know the middle graph, because the middle ground is always the weird sketchy part, plug in a couple sketchy. numbers in there. Like instead of negative half, you go negative point three. Cool. Negative point seven five. I don't know, try different numbers. Negative point nine 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 nine. There you go. Plug up right against it, see what it does. Yeah.